Ah, liquid metal. Yes, on the internet, it sounds like it's magic in a syringe. Okay, that's it. Drop your temps, quiet your fans, unlock your hidden performance. I'm a happy and curious first time liquid metal noob, and I decided to try it on on my Asus RG G16. I went in an optimist, tools laid out, conductor knot ready, and I came out with higher temps and louder fans. Yeah. And of course, well, a smile, because now I can actually tell you what really happened when you DIY, you know, this for the first time. It's not all roses and peaches. I'm a part-time gamer with a grudge on noise and high fan RPMs ruining my vibe and basically, well, I started to believe that the factory applied liquid metal is definitely inferior to the most expensive stuff out there. Well, that's why I got the cryonaut. This wasn't really very hard for me to believe because, well, I had so many issues with this model and brand that I really thought that they chipped out on the liquid metal, but, uh, well, actually, no. <laughs> Shame on me for this one. Uh, LOL, right? Anyway, follow up this video with my Asus Gripe for the full story here. The link should be somewhere in the description down below and you can also see it somewhere up here. So that's where the idea of changing the stuff came out from and well, what follows is a definite how not to or even better said, why not to change out the factory applied stuff. Quick sanity check though, I do have to mention this is very important. Check before we dive in the following. Liquid metal is definitely conductive and it reacts with aluminum. So definitely just keep it on copper or nickel plated copper, unplug that battery, mask that area up and definitely move slowly. I did all of that. I genuinely tried to do everything right. Uh, what I didn't expect though was how easy it is to mess up one thing and that's what matters most. Well, the thickness of the liquid metal applied. I know this wasn't done in a pure scientific way, but I definitely took a reference of the temperatures and the fan speed of the device in my favorite gaming setup and while playing my favorite game as of late, Fortnite. And knowing how it behaved before and after the application gave me, of course, a real world comparison. It was the fan noise that bothered me after all. So by improving the thermal exchange efficiency would ramp down the RPMs, at least in theory, right? I was dumb, so let me show you what not to do or why you should not do it. Or at the very least, take my mistakes and, well, learn from them. Also, for your late night gaming sessions, don't forget to check out my freshly roasted coffee shop down below. So that's my merch below, where I roast on order fresh coffee for you guys to send your way before, you know, the next LAN party begins. Or was that back in the 90s? Hmm. Here's exactly how it went down because I only opened the laptop, well, three times. Round one. I removed and cleaned the factory liquid metal from the CPU side. And then I noticed something that surprised me. My GPU wasn't using liquid metal at all. It had regular thermal paste. That's not something so obvious from the marketing material. They highlight liquid metal so hard that you kind of assume it's both on the CPU and the GPU side. Well, not on my unit. This is a 4060, by the way. The GPU had paste from the factory. So I cleaned everything, applied liquid metal to the CPU, or I should say APU, and fresh thermal paste to the GPU as well. Put it all back together, hit power, and well, immediately noticed higher temps and higher fan speed. It wasn't catastrophic, but clearly worse than it was before. So my magical upgrade? Yeah, it didn't seem so magical after all. Something is not right though. Did you notice it yet? Well, let's address this later as for now it's time for round two. I cracked it back open. This time I noticed the shiny liquid metal blob just sitting there in the middle on sort of middle in the side of the APU die. And here's where my new brain basically betrayed me. I thought that that blob must mean that, well, I basically didn't use enough. So add more. So I did. And then I made it, you know, the classic liquid mistake. I turned the thin layer into a visible puddle. Yeah, horrific, right? Well, I didn't know better back then. So I closed it up again, powered it on, and yeah, even worse. The temps were up, the RPM was higher, and the disappointment was beyond control. Rule number one with liquid metal as it turns out, yeah, more is not better. More is just more or better said, more thermal resistance. So definitely you have to keep that spread very, very thin 
and just a very tiny bit goes a very long way. So this really isn't as forgiving as your classic thermal paste application at all. But I really wanted the first hand experience by myself and being one that learns from my mistakes, well, this proved invaluable to me. Hopefully to you as well, learning from my mistakes. Round three, here it comes. This is where I found a friend. Or better said, well, I actually turned to my AI helper that was ChatGPT and literally just sent photos along the way to get the feedback. I wanted to be absolutely sure I wasn't missing anything, well, something obvious anyway. Uh, we went step by step, cleaned both sides once again, prepared the dye and basically the cold clay so they are both just as uniform silver sheen uh, and then just wiped up any movable excess until it barely looked like anything was on there at all. Even pulled the liquid metal back slightly from the foam dam, make sure nothing was pulling at the edges and mount with very careful cross tightening pattern with very tiny quarter turns. We dialed the application until it looked like a mirror film. Thin, even, no beads, no shine that runs if you tilt it. It looked right, it looked factory, it looked like the photos you see in the teardown videos. Well, I'm kidding. It looked like one of those uh, if you squint this mint videos because it's really hard to handle this stuff and uh, well, to make the perfect application since you need surgeon-like hands uh, and maybe robotic applicators uh, and I've got neither of those. That's what makes liquid metal a headache. You definitely have to have the right environment in order to apply it and very, very small errors or mistakes can cost dearly. So I'm not a huge fan of liquid metal by now and definitely you should learn from this something. At least the takeaway should be that if you want to do it, you have to be really prepared and um, disappointment is always an option. And just like that, I tested again. Results? <laughs> Still hotter than stock under gaming loads, about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius higher, but it seems that the fans now are actually not ramping up as much. Remember spotting something that was wrong from the very first time I've opened up this device? Mm, yeah, well, the behavior changed, uh, the behavior of the fans. And this might be because, well, the contact isn't as good as possible and or maybe it is too, too much liquid metal applied there. Actually, I think part of the problem might be that I haven't redone the VRM and memory thermal interface. Uh, the factory actually used a paste-like gap filler, uh, not pads, that's just a filler. And I'm not going to tackle this in this video. Uh, we can clearly see that the putty there that has been used by the factory should have been redone as well because now it's split between the heatsink and what's left on the VRMs. And this could cause, of course, and actually this will cause, of course, air gaps in the composition once it's all put together. This will hinder, of course, the thermal exchange between the VRM and the cooler and thus the sensors will see the temps on the cooler as being okay while the VRM will definitely run hotter. Or at least this is what I was led to believe. So if you feel that something else is going on, I would definitely appreciate your comments down in the box below. Also, if you want to follow up where I replace properly, also this putty, the K5 style putty or matched pads, uh, show contact prints and retest the temps and noise, tell me in the comments and I will definitely film it for you. For now though, I'm really really happy with the current temperatures and definitely the noticeable lower fan and RPM noise. But it's definitely something to consider if you want the job to be 100% dialed in. That is another step that's finicky, complicated and honestly nerve-wracking, so only dive in if you're comfortable opening the laptop again. Which I'm not, I don't want to do it for the fourth time. At least something is right. I used to have issues while just watching YouTube videos at 4K while on the battery or even plugged in. And uh, all of that set with G Helper set on silent and eco modes where this had previously ramped up the fans of the device making me hate this laptop at night when sitting in bed just before I fell asleep. I really hate hearing fans ramp up especially in quiet places like my bedroom at night. So yeah, before I try to sleep, it really makes it hard, but now I can use it silently for this and it definitely feels great again. So first time trying liquid metal, uh, three opening up of the devices, three clean mounts, pictures, guidance, careful technique, and I still couldn't match the factory job, let alone beat it. But I'm not salty about it and honestly I'm glad I tried it because now I can give you guys the version you don't always hear. The DIY liquid metal on a modern laptop is not guaranteed at all as a win. In fact, it's actually really easy to make things worse. And uh, here's what I learned the fun way, but I did not expect. 1. The factory liquid metal job on this G16 is actually very, very good. Uh, they have the dose, the foam barrier and the pressure 
tuned in but and not only that but it seems that definitely they are using some good stuff over at the factory so kudos to you asus for this well this or the use of more expensive more highly conductive liquid metal really doesn't matter much as the application can be a nightmare and also there is so much that the heatsink can actually do in terms of dissipating the heat away so its design capacity maybe is limited and maybe the stuff they use at the factory is just good enough as it takes uh, as one can take it into consideration. Two, with liquid metal, a pretty blob is a bad sign. If you can see a rounded pool, you're adding thickness where you need actually thinness. Uh, liquid metal needs to act like a microscopic metal interface, not a cushion. If it moves when you tilt the board around, it is definitely too much. 3. Pre-tinning is not optional. You have to rub in a tiny amount into both the die and the cold plate until it just looks like a stain, not a layer. Then you remove anything that still looks wet. 4. Pressure and pad height are definitely kink. In a desktop, you know, you can muscle cooler downs hard and get away with small sins. In a laptop though, if a thermal pad is a hair too thick, or torque is uneven, the heatsink can theater, the contact die can suffer, and your beautiful liquid metal layer becomes a thermal blanket instead of doing, you know, its job. So, would I recommend that a first-timer replace factory liquid metal on a healthy modern gaming laptop? No, definitely no, just leave it as is. If your temps haven't clearly degraded and your fans aren't going wild in comparisons to day one, just leave it alone. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know the saying. If you absolutely have to go in, like your liquid metal has dried out after years of heat cycles, or you've replaced the heatsink, or you've confirmed your pad's thickness and contacts are dialed, then okay, do it slowly and do it right. Otherwise, you can just consider dishing out liquid metal altogether. A top tier paste or phase change pad can definitely get you within a few degrees of liquid metal with far less risk, far less stress, and definitely far fewer opportunities to turn this win into a loss. The biggest lesson for me as a cheerful noob is that liquid metal isn't the main character of the story. Contact mechanics definitely are. You need the right pressure, you need the right flatness, you need the right pad comparisons if you're switching out pads on the, maybe the VRMs. The screw of the order also matters, the, the tightening of the screws also matters. Those decide whenever liquid metal can do its job. When those are perfect, liquid metal definitely shines. When they aren't, liquid metal absolutely forgives nothing. If you've been tempted by the liquid metal hype train, consider this, you know, the friendly sign at the station that says, maybe not this right, not on a healthy laptop. If you had success though with liquid metal, especially at the first application, I am genuinely impressed. Drop the exact steps you did, bad thickness that you used and torque patterns because that's the secret sauce. And if you had failed just like me, share that too because let's make the real world data louder than the marketing material. For me, I'll be gaming on a slightly warmer G16, a little wiser now, a proud liquid metal noob that just earned a small badge, who learned the hard way that the factory precision is hard to beat at home DIY style. Turns out not everything can go DIY very smoothly. Thank you guys for choosing to watch today's episode. You've been absolutely amazing. Don't forget to do me a solid, maybe like, share, comment, you know, all the goodies for the uh, AI algorithm nowadays. And until the next one, don't forget, you can check out some of the videos right here. If you don't want to wait for the new one, stay awesome and see you guys around. Bye-bye.